Hey, what's going on guys? This is Las Vegas, Nevada, and this weekend is the very first ever reptile super show here in Las Vegas. We are gonna see some amazing reptiles, amazing reptile keepers, and I'm also gonna dole out the very first ever Rattle On Awards for the very first reptile super show here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm Dave Kaufman, and these are my reptile adventures. All right, we are heading in up the escalator over there and the expo is up there. Let's go. This is the longest escalator in Las Vegas. All right, look at this place. It's enormous. We've got vendor booth after vendor booth after vendor booth and it goes all the way down. It's gonna take me at least a week to go through this entire expo and see all the really awesomeness that's here, but uh, we only have a weekend, so let's get going. Dave Kaufman. That's how he plays. He rolls down the street almost every day. He has lots of funny things to say. Ask him hit record and you'll hear what I'm talking about. Mm. So as soon as you walk in, you see Megan at Mega Conda and she has the most amazing condas. Wow, they they aren't really bitey, are they? No. He's got like a bluish coloring to yeah. him. Look at that. So it's kind of like retics, because back in the day, retics had a reputation of being just nasty, bitey, and now they're not. Yeah. You know, and, but look at this. I mean, this is not what we think of as the personality of an anaconda. This guy is like ball python gentle. <laughs> These are awesome. And green anacondas, they're becoming more and more popular all the time. Oh, yeah. And these guys have kind of come down in price. I mean, these are a thousand uh, bucks each and... They've gone up, actually, because of the ban. There's only a handful of people breeding them. You can't import them anymore. Yeah. So, and they take forever to grow up and breed, and they breed every two years. Oh, there you go. So, you don't, if you only have one pair, you can kind of wait two years in between breeding them. There so. you go. Gotcha. Gotcha. But they're really amazing snakes. Look at this beauty. So, I kind of geek out about weird and odd things in the world, and when it comes to snakes' patterns, I always love snakes that have different words or patterns in the snake and there's a berm over here I have just got to introduce you guys to. Look at this berm and this guy's name is Ohio, Ohio right? Yes. And that is why. Look at this. O-H-I-O. -O. I've never seen a snake <laughs> that, I mean that is that is legible. You don't even need to like oh, yeah. imagine that that says Ohio. That actually says Ohio. That is really cool. Thank you. Yeah, very cool. All right, Brian's over here with all of his amazing geckos. Uh, we are definitely planning a trip to Belize in April. It's going to happen, but look at these amazing geckos. A xanthic lily white, $35,000, $36,000 for that xanthic lily white. These are just amazing. A xanthic for $27,000. Another Azanthic for $27,000. Man, you've got it going on here. It's been a crazy morning, for sure. Wow! These are the best crested geckos, not only at this show, but at a lot of shows that I've been to. I've never seen anything like this. Look at this. Here's an Azanthic for $23,000. That is just insane. Here's another awesome Azanthic for $30,000. Man, these are awesome. This is a Lily White 100% head Azanthic, 14,500. So you have really taken crested gecko breeding to a whole new level. You've basically created investment level crested geckos. Yeah, the market has changed a lot in the last five to seven years. Absolutely it's it has. It's crazy. These are the hands down most incredible crested geckos I've ever seen.
All right, so it is time to give out the very first Rattle On Awards at the very first Las Vegas Reptile Super Show, and I'm giving those out right after this. Rainbow Mealworms is not only a proud sponsor of this channel, they are the premier source for all your reptile food needs. They grow all of their quality insects in-house, and I use them exclusively for all my insect-eating reptiles. So place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net or click the link in the description below. You know guys, one of the things that I love about coming to expos like this is meeting all the new breeders out there. People that have their heart and soul into their breeding projects and really want to start a company breeding reptiles. And so as I'm walking around and meeting all these new breeders looking for the Rattle On Award winner for the best new breeder, Man, I met a couple over at Fear to Fascination that you guys have just got to meet. All right, so this is Joe and Ash from Fear to Fascination. You know, we were at a party at Brian Bodie's house on Friday night, right? And that's where we met. And I was talking to Ash, and she said that you guys have been doing this for three and a half years, and this is your very first super show. Our first super show. That Shout is out fantastic. To <laughs> that is fantastic. So you guys have been doing this for three and a half years. What got you involved? So what it was is pretty much realize you fear what you don't know. There wasn't a familiarity that I had with snakes. I was the kind of guy that if I walked down the street and somebody had the big old boa, I'm like 20 feet around them. I don't even want to get near them because I just know a thing is going to bite me. And I just realized that's an, not a practical fear to have. So I thought, what is it? What's the deal with the fear of snakes? Let me just try to see if I can touch one, see if I can handle one. And ended up um, handling my first snake, liked it so much, I said, you know what, let's pull the trigger. I bought a banana. The same day we walk around, I bought an albino. <laughs> and so, you know, already the bug was there, take it home. I started handling it, getting over the fear of the snakes. And then it was a Mojave to Mojave, a blue-eyed leucistic that I saw yeah. that had my mind blown. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. You put these two snakes together and you can make that? I gotta try this. And that first little head pops out of the egg and you're hooked, you know, here we are. I you know. couldn't agree more. Yeah. Yeah. And now, were, did you have a fear of snakes or were you always I, awesome? Not a fear, but I was just like, hey, that's cool, and leave it there. My younger brother had snakes, he had a corn snake ball python, and I was intrigued but never owned any until him. Oh, Dave, you gotta hear this one though. <laughs> yeah, all right. So I started breeding these things, right? And uh, she's got an apartment around the corner from my house with a garage in it, doesn't have a car in the garage, and I'm paying an arm and a leg for the rats, you know, at the pet shop. And so I go, I'm gonna have to start breeding rats. I'm gonna figure something out. And we were only dating for like two months. I'm thinking she's gonna think I'm crazy getting into these snakes and leave me. And she says to me, well, babe, you know, if you wanna breed the rats in my garage, you can go ahead and breed, breed them in there. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding yeah, me. So I let that go for wow. maybe two, three weeks. And I'm like, you know what, forget it. Everybody's telling me and I know I'm crazy. If I don't, you need to come move in with me. You're the one. <laughs> nice. And so now Fear of Fascination, that's yeah, so what you named this because that's totally. your story. Yeah, yes. I conquered my fear. Now I've got this huge fascination. We could call it addiction. Anybody out there knows, obviously, you get so into it. But so I, I like to share this with other people. We come to the show and selling the snakes is really last in the mix. It's all about helping people to conquer their fear. And we thought we'd be helping the kids conquer the fear, but it's Most more their the parents. <laughs> Absolutely, right? As I'm looking at what you got here, you know, a lot of people after three years, they'll have one, two genes. They're building up their company. They're building themselves up. Look at this. I mean, we've got a banana yeah. GHI pastel, 66% head clown over here. And the visual clown that we hit this year, we got two of those banana GHIs just growing. Banana GHI clowns. My tri-stripe albino that I hit this year, we hit twins. This was my first, this one's crazy, Dave. This is the first twins I got, the first tri-stripe I hit, and our first double visual all in one. I was floored. Yes. That is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, I love your story. This is just absolutely amazing that three and a half years yes. and you've got genes and you've got snakes here that took people yeah. like 10 times as long to produce. You guys we are on hard. the right track. Thank you so much. We Absolutely. Really love everything you're putting out there. Shout thank out you, all my the man. Rattlers watching. We love you guys too. You know? Thank you. This is awesome. Yeah. Thanks guys. Congratulations on winning the Rattle On Award for the best new breeder. Thank you. <laughs> So at a reptile expo like the Super Shows, whether it's here in Las Vegas or in Pomona or in Anaheim, wherever it is, you are gonna see some of the most amazing snakes. And 
not only the most amazing snakes, but such a diversity of snakes, not just in boas and pythons, but also colubrids. So when it comes to giving out the Rattalon Award for the best snake here, where do you see what I found over at Scales Reptiles? So here at Scales Reptiles, I have found one of the coolest colubrids. Look at this beauty. So this is, haha, you missed me. So this is a cave dwelling rat snake, but this is not the cave dwelling rat snakes that we know and love. This is not the Ridley eye. And when I was in Thailand and I did, uh, here, you wanna get out of my armpit there? Thank you. So when I was in Thailand and I found cave dwelling rat snakes in that cave, man, those were beautiful rat snakes. But this guy is a little bit surly as you can see, but these are not the cave dwelling rat snakes again that we have from Thailand, which are beautiful, but look at this guy. This is a cave dwelling rat snake from Borneo. But what makes these rat snakes unique and unbelievably beautiful is look at that green hue to them. These are unlike any other beauty rat snakes or cave dwelling rat snakes that are out there. Look at those thick black stripes and those yellow highlights, and they really do have this army green hue to them. These are amazingly beautiful rat snakes, and these are incredibly rare rat snakes. As a matter of fact, this one is the first one I have ever seen of the Borneo cave-dwelling rat snakes. These are awesome. And like other rat snakes of this genus, they kind of have a little attitude, but he's calmed down a bit, but I could still get nailed at any time. But man, these are just amazing rat snakes and they are so beautiful. Just look at the coloration. They really do have this kind of really awesome army green coloration to them that just makes these the most unique cave dwelling rat snakes out there. So cave dwelling rat snakes are, can be found on Sumatra. They can be found on the mainland in Southeast Asia, like in Thailand, all the way across the Siam Peninsula. But again, these are from Borneo. And again, these are so rare that this is the first one I've ever had in my hand and this is the first one that I've ever seen available at an expo. All right, so this is Zach here at Scales Reptiles. Now you are local to here in Vegas, correct? Yeah, we just moved from California over to Las Vegas uh, about a couple months ago now. Gotcha. And so where did you come by these snakes? You got three of these here. Yeah, so I have a five total. Five um, total. Yeah, two are back at home um, with another male and female. And uh, ultimately we got these from an importer friend who was, uh, we were lucky enough to, um, once he, he told me about these, I said, whatever you got, give them over. Um, and uh, he did, he gave me all the best ones he could find. And they're just honestly, sometimes they come in with different nicks and you know scars, but every single one we've got is literally perfect. That is flawless. Fantastic. Now, are you keeping some to breed or are you selling them all? Uh, we've decided to not to breed these guys. We have a lot going on with all of our rainbow boas and yeah, yeah. and freebos and just everything. So we decided this would not be one that we'll be keeping to breed. However, I'm hopefully getting more in the future as well. They're just so unique and so rare. And you can definitely see why this is my pick for the Las Vegas Reptile Super Show Rattle On Award for the best snake here. So there are so many amazingly cool lizards at an expo like this. And I'm looking at all the tables that have really amazing geckos. But for the Las Vegas Super Show Rattle On Award for the best lizard here, check out what I found over at Tony's Geckos. So over here at Tony's Geckos, who I've featured before on this channel, I've been to his place and did a whole video, and I've introduced you guys to one of his amazing crested geckos named Frazzle. Tony produces some of the most amazing geckos that you guys have ever seen, including this one. This is a Chihua crested gecko cross from one of Tony's red line of crested geckos. And just look at that. It almost looks photoshopped. It is so red and so vibrant. But the cool thing about it is, look at those tiger stripes down his side. This is one of the most incredible geckos I've ever seen, let alone at this entire expo. Such an amazing gecko. And you can totally see the crested gecko influence in his head, but he is a Chihua crested gecko hybrid. And Chihua geckos and crested geckos, they do live on the same island in New Caledonia. 
and a lot of work has to be done yet to see if these guys are naturally integrating in the wild. When I was there, I didn't see that, but that doesn't mean that they're not doing it there. A lot more work has to be done in New Caledonia to see if these guys are actually integrating in the wild. Tony, as always, you have the most incredible geckos. It is always such a pleasure to come and see you at these expos, see what you're working with, see all the new stuff you're working with. That is absolutely amazing. Now, I gotta ask you, have I met this gecko before? Because he looks familiar. I think when I was little, you, you're I think trying when, to get it. You're I think when I was him. at your place yeah, filming, he was, was just hatching. Yeah, he was like, yeah. He oh, was, he was he just was, a hatchling. I had a couple other ones hatching at the moment that are going to be similar. There you go. But yeah, this one was like a little bit bigger than you're like really interested in it. I, yeah, of course I'm really interested <laughs> in it. Look at that. I mean, look at that in this light. It just glows in the dark. I mean, it literally almost looks fake. If somebody wants to buy this gecko, what are you selling it for? The the lowest I go on it is probably 30K. Why not? Yeah, it's yeah. the only one like it. Like, there's no other one, and plus it's a female. You don't see that with the hybrids. You rarely see females. Well, it's funny because everybody asks me what's going to be the next ball python? What's going to replace yeah. ball pythons? For snakes, I don't think it's going to be anything. But I think for the market, geckos are going to be the next investment quality reptiles. Yeah, they agree. really are. I agree on that. But when you have a crested gecko chihuahua cross like this, you can definitely see why this is my pick for the Las Vegas Super Show Rattle On Awards for the best lizard here. So guys, when it comes to turtles and tortoises, this is Vegas, it's the middle of the desert. Not a lot of people are actually working with turtles out here, but a lot of people are working with tortoises. And I'm gonna introduce you guys to a one-of-a-kind tortoise over at David's Jungle. All right guys, have a look at this big bruiser. And if you think that this looks like a sulcata, well, it is and it isn't. This is actually a Sudanese sulcata. And these get about three times bigger than regular sulcata tortoises do. And this guy right here, this guy is Frank. And this is the biggest Sudanese sulcata in the country right now. And just have a look at how big this guy is. This guy is, well, almost bigger than me. This guy weighs 340 pounds, which is 40 pounds lighter than I am. This guy is just the biggest, most beautiful tortoise here at this expo. And this is David, and now you were telling me that uh, this was actually an import yes. what, like 50 years ago. Well, his, or it's 50 yeah, years so, old. So his estimated age is 50 years old. He was imported into the country as an adult already, and it's been a while since uh, sulcatas have been banned from being imported into the country right. now. But uh, anyway, so that's a guesstimate. It's kind of hard to have a full grown adult, and then guess what its age is for a course. Exactly. You really don't know, but... Uh, Anyway, so we guess he's about 50 years old, and it was a while ago that it was, he was imported here into the country, so it was uh, maybe 20 or 30 years ago since it's been he, he came into the country. And how long have you had him? I have had him uh, since uh, December of last year. Of so, last year. So I've only had him for about 10 months now. Gotcha. So if you're wondering where sulcatas actually come from, they come from Senegal and the neighboring countries in West Africa. And again, this one is from the Sudan. This is a Sudanese spur-thighed tortoise. This is the biggest one in the country. So just to give you a comparison of how big this tortoise is, we're gonna pull out a normal or a regular sulcata here. Now, now I'll pull him out and he's a good size for a normal sulcata, he's 106 pounds. And he's gonna look really small next to this Absolutely guy. Absolutely. Now so if we just saw him, the, the normal sulcata by himself, he would look pretty big. But next to him, he looks tiny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's so pull him out. Look guy. at this big bruiser. Man, you just gotta love huge tortoises. And look at how shy he is. We've got this whole crowd of people around us right now. And he's just so shy. But look at this guy. Holy crap. So this guy looks small yeah. when we put him next to Frank. Nice to meet you, buddy. So look at this. This is about, uh, what did you say, 150? He's 106 pounds. 106 pounds. And just look at how big this is. This is a huge sulcata. But then look at Frank the Tank over here. These are just super huge tortoises. But one of the indicators of a, a Sudanese, if you look at the size difference, is they have this huge high dome shell. You're right. And he's, I mean, he's got a little bit of a dome, but it's more, it's a little bit more flat. 
But look at this right here. These two scoots right here are called goulars. And males have really predominant goulars here. He's being really shy in there. But man, just look at the size of those goulars. They're bigger than my hand. Man, this is such a huge, impressive tortoise. We're gonna measure this tortoise right now and just see how big he is. All right, so how are we gonna measure this tortoise? I mean, this is just yeah, unless I flipped him. a huge, yeah. huge tortoise to measure. Uh, I'm thinking if I sit him straight up, maybe. Let's do it. All right, so look at this plastron here. Look at how concave the plastron is. Man, this is just one impressive tortoise. Now, when uh, people ask how you can sex, like for tortoises, each tortoise is a bit different. But for sulcata, some of them, look at how much is concave. Yeah. And the female stays very flat, but on a huge tortoise like this, you can see how much it really concaves here. Here's the moment of truth. And there we go. We got 38 inches. That is an enormous tortoise. Look at that. 38 inches. That just shows you how big and formidable this tortoise is. Look at these spurs on its thigh. Some of them are as big as my finger. Man. Yeah, look how thick those are. Yeah. And feel those things. Yeah. It's just... Look at that protection. So imagine them in the wild. They pull in for protection. There's their legs there. And look at those plates of armor. It's incredible. All right, so how do you go about weighing a 300 pound plus tortoise? Yeah, so. There, I mean, there's not many scales that you can that are, are that big, but uh, he had never been weighed before when I got him and we were interested to see how much he weighed. And sure. my, my family has a construction company and we decided to uh, take him out there to use a truck scale. So we put him on a forklift and a pallet and dropped him down on a truck scale to get his weight and he was 340 pounds. 340 pounds. <laughs> that is a huge, awesome tortoise and so shy. So after meeting Frank the Tank, you can definitely see why he's my pick for the Las Vegas Super Show Rattle On Award for the best Chelonian here. So for this being the very first Reptile Super Show here in Las Vegas, man, this was incredible to be here, to see the very first one, to see so many reptiles under one roof, to meet so many new fans, and to hang out with old friends. Man, this is what I love about coming to Reptile Expos like this. So anyway, guys, from here, I am off to Toronto for the Canadian Reptile Breeders Expo. That's next week, and then Tinley is right around the corner. So hit that subscribe button when you do hit that bell so you never miss one of those uploads. And until the next Reptile Adventure, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession, and rattle on.